Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode. Today we're doing a cheap camera challenge and the challenge today is what kind of camera can you get for one English pound or Great Britain pound. Um, I don't know what that equates to in euros or dollars but in the UK a pound doesn't really get you very much. Half a cup of coffee I suppose if you're lucky but uh, yeah, a pound is a very, very small amount of money to spend for a camera. And this is the camera that I bought on eBay for one pound. The postage and packing was about three pounds, I think. But that was an next day signed for. So uh, that was cheaper than driving to a thrift store or a charity shop. And to be honest, charity shops now tend to put all of their sort of cameras into a central warehouse and stick them on eBay because they get a lot more money for them. So I don't think that's too bad, but yeah, the camera itself was just a pound. That was the opening bid, there were no other bidders on it, so luck of the draw. But what did our pound get us? Well, it got us an ever ready case, it was quite nice. It got us a strap, it's not a branded strap, but it looks reasonably good. It's even got a, an eyepiece cover on it, so that's quite handy. Turn it around. Oh, it's a long nose case, but it, yeah, it does the job. Oh, and it's a Minolta. So, what Minolta did we get for a pound? We got. Da, 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 a Minolta 7000. Okay. Not the most beautiful or attractive looking camera. It's, AF, so it's obviously an autofocus, which uses the uh, the Alpha mount, the same one as the Sony, because Sony bought out Kaneka Minolta. And uh, yeah, this is quite interesting, the grip on it, but okay. Let's take it out of its case. So it does come with a case. Okay, and now we can see it in all its um, its glory. It's got the usual sort of problem a lot of cameras of this age have. I think this dates back to the very, very early days. In fact, I think this was the first autofocus camera with a built-in drive for the film as well. So this is historic in some ways, but okay. And that's what our pound got us. Show you the top. Okay, there's a bit of bleeding on the LCD, but that's quite common, but... Okay, it's not my kind of camera, it's all push buttons and stuff like that. And the back, and the bottom. It doesn't look as though it's been dropped or suffered any sort of severe damage or anything. Again, the rubber here is deteriorated, but that's quite common. It's cosmetic rather than functional. Let's have a look in the lens throat and see what's going on in there. It's a little bit dusty, a little bit dirty, but uh, the mirror is intact. You can see the amount of crazy patterning and everything on the mirror there. This is obviously a lens lock. Didn't get a lens with it, but what do you expect for a pound? Okay, I presume this is all the focus, manual focus push buttons. Welcome to the technological age. It's fairly chunky. Okay, so batteries presumably go into this side here. So we've got a coin. Let's have a look and see what the battery compartment's like. I expect for a pound it's probably rotten. It's supposed to work, so oh, it's actually quite clean. It's not too bad at all. Okay, there's a little bit down there, but it's not, compared to some of the stuff you see, it's uh, it's not too bad at all. Okay. It's just this needs a bit of decorating there, it needs a bit of a, a bit of a polish up. Okay, so this runs on AA batteries, I'm assuming. I just happen to have some here, so... Spring end is always the negative end. So it does tell you in there how to load the, the batteries. You do number one, number two, number three, and number four. So that's number one. 
well, that's going to be number two. Can I put these in without dropping them? You know what I'm like with camera batteries. Number three. And number four. Okay, and then that sits back in like so. And then we have to tighten this up. I don't know the specs of this camera at all. Um, so, that's it with the batteries in. So, how do we turn this on? Okay, lock on. Oh, okay. So, we seem to have got some life in it. In the front. This is the one that's got the uh, the touch sensitive uh, part there. Okay, we need a lens. This wasn't included in the pound. But, uh, Minolta lenses are not particularly expensive, and you may well have one kicking about. Got to cheat somewhere in this video. Thirty-five to seventy f four. So I mean, nothing remarkable, but it is an AF lens. So okay, uh, does the AF work? Switch that on to AF and oh yep that's working okay so we have program mode over here we have a button for modes so I'm assuming that with this you can change the modes okay we have an A mode and M mode S I presume that's for shutter program aperture priority manual shutter program so PASM pretty standard and you can use these buttons to change between them so you've got mode you've got drive so I'm assuming that that's the same button yeah single continuous and that's probably a self timer so I leave it on single we've got an ISO button so I obviously saw the change from ASA coming so it's saying 200 Dedicated flash hot shoe, so I'm assuming it uses Minolta's type of flashes. Okay, let's open the back up and have a look inside, see what's going on in there. It's got a beep function as well, presumably that's a focus lock on. So in the back you can see the pressure plate, it's got the old film reminder window where you can see that the actual film is if it's loaded. Take up spool, I imagine this is easy loading because it's got to be automated somehow. DX coding, the winders at the top, no manual rewind, so I assume it just rewinds the film when it's done. Okay, it's looking pretty good so far. So let's try doing some film with it. This is another roll of this Pan 400, just uh, Ilford brand Kentmere film. This is a DX coded. Um, this is the 35mm film. This is the DX coding tabs, and obviously it shorts them. Obviously, me and my obviously, there it 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 shorts out between different contacts, and the camera can tell what I say the film is. Again, I haven't read the instruction manual because I don't believe in that. Uh, well, it's probably pretty easy to understand. Pull the film across until the orange line. Close the back. Turn the camera on. Oop. And there we are at the first one, and it's loaded the ISO at 400. So, yeah, you can see 400. And it's flashing, I presume we have to, oh, you don't have to press anything. So there we go. Um, our pound seems to have got us a working camera. I don't know what the P in there means. Maybe that just takes it straight to program mode. Um, interesting. I don't know what this one here does, but we'll figure that out as we go along. Anyway. Yeah, cosmetically it's... Uh, 
it's not in great condition but uh, overall I'm fairly pleased with that this white stuff is you've seen this on quite a few cameras it hasn't gone sticky like um, some of the Nikons and the earlier Canons go a bit sticky I'm assuming this is from late 80s early 90s and I'm an old to a pioneers of autofocus and uh, yeah that'll clean up it's kind of like rubber actually one plastic so there you have it the start of the one pound camera challenge and that's what we got for a pound we got the camera body obviously the batteries and the film and the lens didn't come with it but we did get an ever ready case we did get a strap and the strap has got on it a blind that can go over the uh, does that fit over the the viewfinder part block out light I'm assuming it does a bit like cannons do yeah, that just slides into there somehow okay I'm not doing timed exposures but yeah that is the uh, the camera I got for the one pound camera challenge excluding batteries film lens and uh, shipping but I got the body for a pound so that leaves plenty of money over um, to buy some lenses if you're already shooting uh, Sony's with an alpha mount then uh, that's a cheap introduction to film photography to be honest certainly as regards the camera goes its looks might grow on me but uh, yeah not really my sort of thing but yeah we'll give it a try see what the results are like and uh, yeah thank you very much for watching quite a quick video actually today for me and uh, yeah we'll see what the results are like thank you very much for watching hope you enjoyed um we're going to do a few more of these sort of one pound five pound ten pound challenges incidentally i just saw a pentax k1000 on ebay with a 50 mil f2 lens it was mint camera mind you 275 pounds that went for um this was a pound okay you'd have to get the lens for it but uh, 274 pounds buys you a lot of lenses anyway once again thanks for watching hope you enjoyed we were at 90 subscribers this morning when i checked so that prize draw is getting closer and closer only another 10 subscribers and then we've got the film giveaway hope to see you in the next one Bye.